Nice Jupiter, so small. Let's use my new 5x Barlow on it. What? Oh. Should you use a Barlow to increase the size of the objects in your eyepiece? Maybe. Let's find out in this video. If you're a beginner and want more magnification, you're wondering what Barlow should you buy? 2x, 3x, 5x, who knows? However, the expectations usually don't match the reality. Sometimes we push more than we should and the objects turn larger, but at the same time they will blur. And we don't want a blurred image, not at all. And to fix that, you first need to know the magnification threshold of your telescope. What's the higher magnification your telescope can handle? It's very easy to know. Just multiply your telescope aperture in inches by 50 and you'll have the result. For instance, a 6 inch telescope by 50 will result in 300 times of magnification. The 8 inch 400 times, the 10 inch 500 times and the 12 inch 600 times. As you can see, aperture matters. And now that you know your theoretical threshold, let's check with different eyepieces and barlows if it stays below the threshold. To do that is also very simple. Just divide the focal length of your telescope by the focal length of the eyepiece you want to use it. In this case, use millimeters only. Then just double the result if you want to know the value using the same telescope and the same eyepiece but using a Barlow. Let's use a 10mm eyepiece as an example. For instance, a 6 inch with 750mm of focal length divided by 10mm of the eyepiece will give us 75 times magnification. The 8 inch with this eyepiece will give us 120x magnification the 10 inch will give us 125x magnification and the 12 inch 150x magnification. And you can see if you want to add a 2x Barlow to this 10mm eyepiece, all of these telescopes will work below the threshold. Even that you use a 2x Barlow with all of them. So with these numbers we can easily find the minimum value of an eyepiece to use with your telescope, which will be around 3 mm for these four telescopes I used in the test. And that's not far away from reality. Sometimes I can use my APM eyepiece of 3.5 mm, which is a high power eyepiece I use to watch planets and also the moon. Of course, I don't use any Barlow with this eyepiece. This is a real image of Jupiter planet with bad seeing. And I just used a cheap smartphone to bring you the image that matched the visual reality using my 12 inch Dobsonian telescope and this 3.5 mm APM extra wide angle eyepiece. This means I was with 1500 mm of focal length and dividing that by the 3.5 mm of the eyepiece gives us 428x of magnification. We cannot see sharper details because of the bad seeing. That's why we also have to be careful using a barrel with an eyepiece. And you may wondering, is there a sweet spot for an eyepiece for your telescope? Well, some people use a simple way to find that. And it's using the focal ratio of your telescope, which is the F value. For instance, look at your labels, it should be F5, F10, F6. Using that as a reference, for instance, an F5 will be a 5mm eyepiece, the sweet spot. An F6, a 6mm eyepiece. An F10, a 10mm eyepiece. Well, it's also a rough way to do it, but not far away from reality. So the theory is very interesting. However, there are many other factors that will interfere with your views. For instance, you will need a good seeing, which means a stable atmosphere. We don't want turbulence. That will affect the views. Also, you want a proper acclimation of the mirrors of your telescope. 
to leave it outside for a while before observation to allow the mirrors to warm up or cool down and match the temperature outside. But even more important than that, you will need practice. The more you practice and use your telescope, the more you get used of the scene conditions of the magnifying thresholds without needing any formula. So should you buy a Barlow or not? Let's see in a moment. Let me first tell you what I'm doing. This is the eyepiece I use the most, the 9mm from Explore Scientific. It's a wonderful eyepiece. I like to watch the planets, for instance, with it, as long as many other objects. The thing is, for instance, with Jupiter planet, if I use this Barlow, 2x Barlow from Explore Scientific, I will transform this 9mm eyepiece in a 4.5mm eyepiece, thus more magnification. However, most of the time I can only use this eyepiece without a Barlow to have a good view of Jupiter in my eyes. Because if the thing is bad, if I add this 2x Barlow, the planet will be blurred and we don't want that. However, sometimes when the scene is great and I have everything properly prepared, adding this 2x Barlow to this 9mm eyepiece will bring me amazing views of Jupiter. That you will learn with practice. So should you buy a Barlow? Yes, my opinion is that you should buy a Barlow, a 2x Barlow, maybe a 3x but it's pushing a bit more i recommend the 2x because it will also double the number of eyepieces you have in your suite case if you have let's say three four or five eyepieces with five eyepieces you will double the number of eyepieces because you will use the 2x barlow with most of them however a 3x 4x or 5x will be a bit overpowered for instance, I have my 4X Televu Barlow, which I love, but I only use this Barlow with a camera. I don't use it visually, it's too much. Actually, this is a PowerMate, not a Barlow, but it's similar, it doesn't matter for the purpose, which is to understand if you should buy or not to buy a Barlow. And that's why I strongly recommend for you not to buy a 5X Barlow unless you are thinking in doing astrophotography and especially planetary imaging which is astrophotography of the planets otherwise forget it it will only bring you frustration so buy your 2x barlow the higher the quality the better i will leave the links at the description for you to check but now you should know how to use a Barlow and that's why you should check this video over here to improve your knowledge about this topic.